today we're going to talk about your online presence. And basically your online presence is speaking for you when you can't speak for yourself. Meaning if you're not in your office or your patient is not in your office, they oftentimes are looking for you online. And so optimizing your website and your online presence overall is vital, more so now than ever. And we get a chance to do some training on that today. So Andre, thank you for joining us. And I'll turn it over to you. And if you need anything from me while we're going along here, just let me know. I will be in the background. So I wanted to start off with obviously the question is, what is SEO? And I know that is a term that gets thrown out a lot um, by companies like we'll do your SEO or maybe you write an article. Um, and so I just wanted to you know, kind of go over that basics. And I apologize if anybody here is already familiar with it. Um, but I definitely want to make sure that if there were people who were not, that we definitely touched this so that we were on the same page. Um, so to start, it's real simple. What is SEO? The practice of increasing quantity traffic site for organic search engine results. Um, you know, something that a lot of people who come to Code May and come to me and they ask, do you do SEO? is understanding that it's a practice. So it's something that you continually do. Um, I've run into many people who believe that it's as simple as just going in and adding some keywords to a website or going in and making sure that you are you know, writing a couple of good articles that use the correct URLs and slugs and all of these different technical things. SEO is an ever-changing process that you have to do constantly. Um, you know, in, in 20, 25 years ago, um, when you know, the internet had like 10 sites, Saturation. SEO was very easy. It was very easy to come up on top. Um, all you had to do was just, again, add some keywords, make sure that you had some good links to your site. And the search engines like Google, Yahoo, Lycos, Ask Jeeves, and all those ones that you'll probably never hear ever again, simply just look for those keywords. And it was very simple. But as the internet has grown, as we've gotten into the you know, billions of sites, um, including everybody's Facebook pages and Twitter accounts and Yelp pages and every other directory that's out there, it's getting harder and harder to be the number one guy on a search page. Um, one of the things that you know, a lot of people really you know, kind of have a hard time dealing with is, is that, is that you know, there's so many people that want to be on top that you, know, it, you can never stop. I mean, if you guys have ever been the you know, number one in something, you make you the guy at the top of the hill, and now everybody wants your spot. So it's, once you've gotten it, you have to continue to do it. You have to you know, keep advancing it. Um, and so we're just going to go over a few of those things. To give a brief history, you know, like I mentioned before, early SEO focused primarily on keywords, because that at the you know, early days was what everybody thought uh, you know, or, or what essentially what it was going after was just making sure that if you were, in this case, a dentist uh, and you have a website that you just said dentist a bunch of times and maybe added some geographical tagging to it so that when somebody went on Google, they just said dentists in my area, then that did it. Um, you know, again, like I mentioned, tags, making sure that the images that you had on your website said the right things um, and then having a bunch of backlinks, which was just having other sites linked to your site, which raised, you know, how much relevancy, you know, as SEO became more and more of a, you know, uh, a gimmicky product for a lot of businesses out there that led to keyword stuffing. So what that means is essentially you'd have a company that would just go into your website and just litter it with any kind of keyword they could possibly think of without actually thinking as to what was the intention and how useful was that information to the person who was doing the search. So in the early days on Google, you would see a lot of results that although they were on the top of the page, weren't relevant to the user and what that user was trying to find. Um, excessive tagging. Same thing as the keywords. People would go through every image and just litter it with every tag they could possibly think of. And again, great for getting you at the top of the page, but not a lot of relevancy into what the user was trying to accomplish. And it's, you know, just like in today's day where you can buy followers on Twitter or Instagram, people would just buy links and they were never, or not never, but they, you know, a lot of times you'd find that they were links that weren't high quality. Um, and again, you know, you'll, you'll hear me say this again and again, relevancy. How is this information useful to the user. And so early SEO didn't really accomplish what we were, you know, what as, as, a, as an end user we were trying to get, which was we had a question that we needed something. And we're now moving into a phase where current search engine algorithms focus on providing users with information that is useful and relevant. Um, you know, as technology grows, as we get products like, you know, Siri or Amazon Echo, we're getting into that contextual conversational piece where we have a question or we need something and we want an answer. And so Google and other search engines are changing the way they look at things to find what is relevant to a particular individual. Um, and so we'll go through some of the things that they look for and, and how you can do that. In this case, three things to focus on for today's search engines is mobile optimization. Um, as currently, over 50% of all internet traffic is done on some sort of mobile device, whether that's a tablet or your iPhone or your Android. Um, people are moving away from using desktop computers as their primary source of internet browsing. Um, in fact, if I didn't have to use a computer, I would probably only use my phone for almost anything digital. The next thing is quality content. It's looking for things that are relevant to a user and answers that user's question. And then we'll get into that. And relevancy. Is that content or information that you are providing on your website or other channels useful to the end user? Um, you know, if somebody looks up, you know, dental implants, and the only thing on your website has to do with, 
braces, that's not relevant to somebody who's looking at dental implants. And so you want to make sure that the information that you want to show is useful to that end user. Um, a great article, if you guys want to write this down, um, and I'll leave it up there for a few seconds because it's a, it's a fantastic uh, kind of history of SEO, where it's been and, and where it's going. Um, I would have loved to have gotten into more of it, but that, you know, we would get into a lot of higher these things we think is useful to you today. But if that's something you're interested in, definitely um, follow up with this article to understand kind of that, that uh, process of search engine optimization. Um, I found this very useful and, and I find it useful to explain to my clients um, exactly what kinds of things um, that we can do. Um, so hopefully if you guys have had enough time, you can screen share it or screenshot it and, and take that. Um, so the first thing, because we want to focus on these three things, um, I want to go over is website design and development. Now, the old tricks of keywords and making sure that your URL is appropriate for the area and what you're trying to do absolutely still apply. So if you're a, you know, the best thing you could look for is if you're a dentist in a certain city would be, you know, in, in my example, in my city where I live is Huntington Beach, California, you know, we're um, because when people search that, those are the you know, quick keywords to go after. Um, so those things are still absolutely important. Um, but you, you know, with, with everybody buying up URLs, it may not be something that you can get. Um, because I can't look at every one of your websites, um, I wanted to give you some things that you could do to look at yourself and, and ask questions. So for example, here are questions to ask yourself about your website. You know, how does my site look on mobile devices? Uh, in 2017, 53% of all internet traffic was done through mobile devices, which was up from 42% in 2016. Um, as technologies grow and expand on the internet, there's a lot of things that are done to make it so that your website can be easily seen on both desktop and, and mobile. Um, in, in, in our field, we call that mobile responsiveness. Um, and something, uh, an exercise that I definitely recommend you do is open your browser, your computer, uh, go to your website and start resizing the, the, the browser. Make it smaller, make it bigger, make it as skinny as possible. And you'll see that if your website doesn't realign the content to fit that size, it's not mobile, uh, sorry, it's not mobile responsive. Um, in today's internet, that is a massive, massive, massive feature that helps Google take a look at, is this something that's gonna be relevant to somebody looking it up on the internet? Um, if, you know, for example, for me, if I'm on my phone and you know my mouth is hurting because I have a cavity or I chipped a tooth or whatever my need may be, I'm most likely going to go straight to my phone and look it up. If Google thinks that the website that I'm about to pull up is not going to be useful to me because it's not mobile friendly, it's going to push that down on the ranking and it's somebody else because of its responsiveness. So first thing off of that, take a look at your mobile, your website and see if it's mobile optimized to, to show the information you want to show in a way that can be easily looked at on a mobile device. Um, is it easy to use your website on a mobile device? Um, it may sound like that's very similar to the first one, but sometimes people will design a website to look good, but the ease of use is not always there. Um, you know, every time somebody you know, has a website, especially our clients, we always try to decide what are we trying to accomplish and are the buttons lined up? Is the content displayed in such a way that the user can easily move around on it? Um, sometimes you'll hear this being said, uh, <clears throat> people will mention things like bounce rate. And what that is, is what is the percentage of people who will go to the website and immediately, um, they don't click through to anything else on your site. So for example, if I went to your website and I immediately saw that it wasn't, it, it wasn't user friendly, I would go back and I would find another one. Google recognizes that measurement and your bounce rate, if it's higher or lower, absolutely goes into its ranking. Websites with a lower bounce rate um, rank higher because Google looks at that as this is something where people get to that website, they see information that's relevant to them and they continue to go through it. Um, so making sure that your site is easily being able to be used is, is a very key factor. Um, does my website make it easy to find the information a user is looking for? Um, a lot of times, and, and we've, you know, in, in preparation for this, I looked at a lot of dental websites. And obviously, as a dentist, you guys offer different people maintenance, cleaning, um, all the way to if, if you do implants or reconstructive surgery, whatever you might do, easily listing out all of your services so that somebody can go to it and quickly find what it is that they're looking for. So for me, if, you know, if I have kids and I'm looking for, you know, a place where they can have braces or maybe Invisalign, you know, and that's something that you offer and you want to show up as, quickly going in there and showcasing Invisalign or you know implants and things like that. So somebody can look at that and go, oh, perfect, here's where I'm going. Again, that will help lower the percentage of your bounce rate, um, which goes into raising the ranking for your website. Um, the website direction. So every website we build, we start with a concept of what is the goal for this site? What do we want people to do? In most cases, probably 95% of the time, we want to get someone's information. We want them to inquire about our services or our client services and give us a little data about them. A lot of times it's, we want people to get to a point where they call us, where they schedule an appointment. Um, a lot of times design, and, and we, we see this a lot with, with a lot of uh, clients who come to us from other developers, the design process is not done in a way to flow people through a pipeline to get to that end goal. You know, someone wants to make it look pretty or they want it to have a flashy animation on top of it. In the end, 
what we want to do is move somebody from an introduction to who we are to how you do that it obviously differs from client to client and industry to industry um, but you know a lot of the very first thing that you would want someone to do uh, as a dentist is to call your office and schedule an appointment or if you have a special to click to redeem that special um, so taking a look at how the site is designed does it flow that through is, is a very key aspect to that um, and then have i redone my website in the last two years or so and the reason why i say that is a lot of technologies advance and constantly i mean even even faster than people you know, a lot of developers you know evolve as developers go you know we can build something today and tomorrow the internet development community comes out with a completely different language that changes the game entirely um you know it's like buying a computer if anybody is like me i hate my there's oh the moment i buy the new app two months down the road they're going to release a new one and i'm going to be horribly depressed that now my computer is somehow ancient and obsolete so um two years is a good life cycle it also gives you the option to take a look at the learnings of what you've had uh, go on with your website the last years and then redesign it um and then does my website give me the ability to routinely update it with fresh and new content this is an important part because we you know i want to go back to that concept of quality content and relevancy so two of the things that google looks at when you know when it does its little search uh you know feature is how often is this website being updated because too many times does somebody build a website and then leave it there for years so the data isn't fresh it isn't relevant to today's use and it sees that it sees when was the last time it was updated so having updatable content that is constantly in your rankings because Google looks at that and says that's relevant to the users. If the last time you posted or updated anything on your website was, you know, 2012, Google's going to take a look at that and say either you don't exist anymore as a business because you are not updating your website or you're just not cutting edge enough or you're not up to date with what's going on so that your information is not relevant. Um, our code made recommendation, obviously with web technologies advancing at rapid pace, we recommend a rebuild of the website every two years. This way you're taking advantage of all the new technologies. You're able to take the learnings that you've had um, and apply them to the new design and new build. Um, and then it also presents something fresh for somebody who may have seen you before, but you want to capture their attention again. Um, it's, a, it's a recommendation we give to all of our clients, whether it be digital clients, whether it be our development clients. I tell them every two years you should be updating. Some website tips to keep in mind. Regularly update your website with relevant and quality content. Um, you know, I know the term blog gets thrown out a lot and it has become kind of cliche and sure I have a blog, but a blog or whatever you want to call it, whether it be an article section, um, is absolutely important to maintaining that freshness. Um, I have in here post this content to your social media channels. I'll talk about that a little bit later on why that's important, but everything you do should rest and, 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 and be housed on that section of your website because that, again, is what Google and Bing and all of these other search engines are constantly looking at. So whether it be you write an article once a week or you're changing you know, the, the copy uh, every few months, constantly update that because that's going to help you out. Both actions are clearly visible. Now, I know that that sounds like one of those no-brainer, duh statements, but you'd absolutely be surprised at how many people we look at uh, and, and their websites don't have that on there. And for whatever reason, maybe somebody thought that it looked tacky in the design and it's not how they want it to be you know, seen. If your goal is to get people to contact you, you want that to be right there. Very first thing somebody sees when they land on your website is, this is how I contact them, this is where they are, you know, and then this is what I'm looking for. So if you're running specials or offers or make sure that they're right there. Um, again, it's a big part. Somebody clicks on that, lowers your bounce rate. It's, it's what they're looking for. Decide what your goal is and ensure every action a user takes leads them to that goal. Um, you know, we work with a lot of people who, again, like I mentioned before, the goal is to get information for their team to follow up with. So every page that we build out for them, every, every article that they write, every image that they post, all leads to one part of that funnel, which is contact us. Um, it, and it doesn't matter what it is, the homepage, you know, at the bottom of the homepage, very first thing, you know, as they go down, they read, it says, want to learn more, contact us. It's at the top of the page. If they click through to go take a look at, um, as an example, you know, we work with a, a travel agency that specializes in safaris in Africa. If they click on a, a destination page, it goes through, you know, the benefits of that trip and the exciting, you know, adventures that, that are waiting for them. And at the very end, it says, click more, you know, click to learn more or contact us to schedule trips. Shrek to that goal. In this case, for you guys, it would be to schedule an appointment. So every page should have a button or link or some big call to action that says, reach out to us. And then make sure your website has a section for every product and service you provide. Sorry for the typo there, uh, you provide. Um, you know, a lot of people will leave that out and, and it's kind of a no brainer, but you should definitely have um, a little blurb for everything you do because when Google's going through, when Google's pulling up that information, you want that information easily available um, so that you can be listed when somebody is searching, whether it be for basic teeth cleaning or all the way to implants. Um, social media. Social media obviously, uh, has become a very important part of the internet. Uh, it accounts for pretty much 50% of all internet traffic these days. Age and demographic is on social media. Um, I, I remember when my grandmother, who is in her 80s, first reached out to me and started posting on my Facebook page, I knew uh, that this was definitely a, you know, a different world where I could no longer uh, you know, avoid her calls. And she now gets a hold of me 
all the time through it. So everybody is on it, and it is a, it is an important part that even you know Google and other search engines use in doing their in their searching. Um, you know, you if, if if you're like me or if you're like anybody else, you probably thought of when I said social media as like you know Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Um, I'm not going to bring up things you know like Snapchat or you know all the new up and comings because one Snapchat I still think is for teenagers, and uh, you know all the new ones haven't quite made it yet. We'll see how Facebook does in the coming days with you know with their Cambridge Analytica scandal, but I think they're they're in that position where they're too people jump off them just. Um, I also want to include you know a, a few ones that you may not have thought of as social media channels, but they're you know just as important is Yelp, Google My Business, um, which is kind of a rebrand of Google's Google Plus, and then I use this as you know like a uh, industry specific or localized directory, um, and I'll go into why that's a, an important aspect of that. Um, all of these channels take up space on the internet, and all of these channels are indexed by your search engine. So content that matches, if there's more of it that says you know yourdentalpractice.com or whatever that gets shown as being relevant. So having more properties out there that are saying the same thing, that focus on the, on the same information helps you out. Um, now, this is kind of when I speak to clients them about what their strategy be. I always say, it doesn't matter what social channels you have. And I left out Twitter and Instagram because frankly, I don't know how many people in the dental world um, use Instagram to showcase their product or service. I would assume if it were me, I would not want to be the person who had their picture taken as part of the Instagram process of getting my teeth cleaned. Um, so that's why I left it off. And, and Twitter, I have found that unless you are a Kardashian um, or you know a highly public figure, Twitter is not something that a lot of people use on a day-to-day -day individual basis. Um, so we kind of have eliminated those ones. And these, we've kept these kind of four big ones to focus on. But again, do searching. There are you know new and upcoming ones that are always there um, and, and will always go there. Um, the main function of these should be to direct people to your website. The information, whatever your website's name is, yoursite.com, for example, Google is going to take a look at that and it's going to say that this is relevant. So, you know, the, the reviews on Yelp, the reviews on Google My Business, the reviews and content on Facebook, the content on Google My Business, and then even the reviews and information that you have on, you know, uh, you know whether it be 1-800-DENTIST or whatever industry or local directory there is, all of that gets used. And I'll show you a little bit later why I mentioned those um, because I did a search and I'll show how that, where that falls into the category. But everything you do should direct back to your website. So whether you're writing a blog or an article or things like that, you definitely want to post those on those other channels, but always as a link to go back for someone to read it on your website. So anytime that, you know, for example, I do a blog or talk about web design or web development, I write it on my website and then I go and I post it to our social media channels. And that anybody who goes and clicks to read that is directed to my website so that one, we get that backlinks traffic, but then we also get the fact that somebody is looking at it. So Google registers, ah, somebody looked at it, somebody's going to there. And then they start clicking around and they start looking at the things that we do. They start, you know, going around. We see a very low bounce rate because of the way that we have it structured to where, we entice people to constantly be looking at something new. So everything should go back to that. Um, I wanted to showcase kind of the exact specific things that are uh, important about each channel um, so that you guys had an idea. So Google My Business, and, and I'll show you where this lies on the page and why this one is so very important, um, but it is the most relied on information for Google, and it's going to continue to go in that way. Uh, you know, reviews on Google My Business are most important. It's, it, it's, um, I can't stress it enough. I see people who leave their Google My Business page either unclaimed or unupdated, or they just post a few things and then leave it be. Um, so much information is going into those these days where now you, know, you can look up a business and it will tell you when is the busiest time uh, when people go there. So there's just so much flowing through the Google My Business section that if you don't have that activated or you don't have it claimed, absolutely go in, get that set up. If you've left it alone for a while, get in there and update it. Um, get people to post images, post images of your, of your practice. Um, anything you can do to get more content regularly on that page is of vital importance. Um, Facebook, routine, routinely updated content and reviews increase your relevancy. Um, Use as a distribution point for your website's articles information. Um, yeah, you know, it's set on that one to, to, to be pretty clear on it. Um, it should, it's one of those things where you just want to direct people to go back to what you're doing, and the more information you have on that, the better. Uh, Yelp. Um, if you're like me, you have a love and hate relationship with Yelp. Yelp can be your worst nightmare, and it can also be your your friend, depending on how many people may or may not like you. Um, but Google does use this information to assess how relevant your business is to a customer um, by the fact that they're reviews. And you know, I've, I've worked with companies who have had horrible reviews and have talked about, you know, how to crack the, the Yelp algorithm, how to, how to you know, get rid of your negative reviews. And the best recommendation I can give to everybody when it comes to Yelp is, and I've even talked to Yelp employees that I know, and the best thing is just have a great business and invite people to elicit. But, you know, the way I've always talked to people is, hey, are you, are you a Yelper or are you on Yelp? Yeah. Did you have a great time? Yeah. 
you know, reach out, give us a great review. We'd love to hear. Um, there are programs out there that you can use to uh, invite people. For example, if somebody, a patient has just finished their, you know, their, their appointment, um, you can reach out to them and say, how was it? If they give a great review, you invite them to share it on different channels. Um, so those are programs out there. And I definitely recommend that you go and you look for those because those are important. And then local and industry specific directories, uh, increase your web presence as well as Bank for Compass has a lot of those. And I'll show you that on one of the next things is uh, they pay for that spot on Google. So you definitely, uh, you, you get the benefit from being on them. Um, and so how does that look in real life? And I'm going to switch over to a, a browser that I have um, open, show you, uh, let me, uh, I'll maximize it so you guys can see. And I apologize if it is a little too small. Um, here we go. So I did a search dentist near me. And like I said, I live in Huntington Beach, California. Um, and you'll see right here, the very first thing that popped up, and obviously you'll see is ads, which is a whole other ballgame entirely. Um, oh, and sorry, also, Andre, I can't yeah. see, the, I can only see the, uh, the presentation. I can't ah, see the web browser. Thank you. Let me, <sighs> let me change that. Thank you for mentioning that. Let me do a stop share, I guess reshare. We'll just do my desktop. How's that? Oh, there we go, you got it. Perfect, I apologize guys. Um, so the very first thing that comes up when I do a search dentist near me is find a dentist near you, search by zip 1-800-DENTIST. That was one of the big reasons why I chose 1-800-DENTIST on that. Um, you know, they obviously make money by clicking through being referred to your business to be at the top. Um, you know, you'll see a bunch of ads and, and, and I'll briefly touch on those, but I wanted to show you right off the top, the very first thing that Google looks at in terms of organic results is data from their Google My Business um, directories. And this, as you can see, this tells you exactly um, you know, who's near me. And so when I open this up and I take a look at it, I can see all the different dentists. So this is based on the information that you provide to your Google My Business. Um, and that's what they're gonna tell me is the most important because it's close to me. I live down here by the water, and this is what it says is, is the most relevant information. Um, and then after that, as we go back, if you take a look, Best Dentist Huntington Beach, California, Again, it's one of those ones where guys like Yelp, they benefit from people going through their uh, directories to get to you. Um, and so they definitely work hard to um, be at the top of the list. And then as you can see, Dentist Huntington Beach, Family Dentistry HB, Oceanic Dental, H, you know, Huntington Beach Dentist, all of these things, uh, they rank very well. And one of the, you know, I went through uh, in the past and, and went through them and all of them, you know, benefit from, here's an example, um, Oceanic Dental. Um, although from a design perspective, I'm not in love with this website, but it does everything that I would want it to do as a user. It gives me exactly all of their services, you know, plenty of information for me to look at offers, you know, contact info and call to action is right there at the top. You know, everything I'd want out of this is right there. Um, obviously Google makes money through advertising and that's why you'll always have ads at the top. Um, and it's a very highly competitive market for the dental industry. You know, whereas I work with a lot of clients in the fitness industry who, you know, they pay between one and $3 per click. I have, you know, I've seen dentists who, you know, especially in like the implant market where they'll spend $25 just to get me to click on their, uh, on their ad. Um, it's a whole ball, different ball game up there. And my honest opinion, and it's something that I tell everybody is you can do all the work in the world to make your, your, your organic traffic as high as you can, which you absolutely should. Um, but you should definitely have some sort of layer of a pay-per-click campaign so that, uh, so that you can be there. Uh, and the same general rules apply. It's not just whoever pays the most. They here will generate them more money because they'll be clicked more. So for example, if this very top one, you know, said a dentist in San Diego, that's not relevant to me and I'm not going to click that. So Google doesn't make any money. But if it is relevant, you know, right here, great, I'm going to click on that. Google makes money. So they're, they're, it's not always just about overspending. It's about having relevant information there. But if you want to get the top, unfortunately, that is the, the biggest way to do that. Um, and to round out, let's see if I get back. <laughs> All right. So. Looks like there was a brief uh, disconnect there. I apologize. So I'll start right back up where we were. Um, you know, right here is, is a good is a good point to take a look at. You know, here's all the work that people have done from an organic perspective. Um, but at the end of the day, people are still going to pay to be at the top of that list. Um, you know, whereas I deal with a lot of people who pay, you know, anywhere from one to three dollars per click. A lot of people in this space, you know, especially if you deal with like implants, are paying between twenty five and thirty five dollars. It's a click. Um, it's you know, unfortunately, you know, it's like I said, a, a lot of my clients is you don't pay to play. Um, we're we're definitely in that space where you know it's not as the competition is fierce, and so you want to be in that. Um, and and like if, that's, if it didn't cut off when I said this, a lot of the same rules apply to this. They still provide what they consider to be relevant content. So if this was somebody here saying best dentist in San Diego, but I'm nowhere near San Diego, um, Google would not post that because nobody's going to click on that. Obviously, Google's not going to make any money on it. Um, going back to the presentation. Um, and we'll just go through here. Um, here are some steps that you guys can take right now, um, you and your team, and it doesn't cost any money, um, and it's just it's, it's just gonna something that you can easily do is, you know, get a strategy for content. Um, whether that's writing a blog post once a week or articles about, you know, 
um, whether it be the, the, the best way to floss your teeth or you know the right care to take care of long-term enamel care. Whatever that article is, if it's relevant and it's something that you know will get your name out there and will provide uh, interest in your business, put it out there. If it's once a week, once a month, you know, every two weeks, whatever it is, it's great for you to just be constantly updating your website. Um, update social media channels to ensure all your location information mirrors your website. So, you know, make sure that your phone numbers are written out this exact same way. Make sure that you're, you know, that the same contact emails on there. Make sure that the address is listed the same way. All of those things go into helping Google and other search uh, engines group those things together so that it says this is relevant to the user. Uh, articles have on your social media channels that direct back to your site. Like I said before, with your strategy and schedule relevant content, you want to make sure that those live on your website and that when you're posting to your social media channels, you always do them as links to go back. Um, and so we definitely want people to go to your website because that's where we're going to capture their information. We're going to get them to call you or we're going to get them to engage with you somehow to get them to be um, a customer of yours. Um, and then obviously invite your patients to review your practice on Google My Business, Facebook, Yelp, and other channels because the more reviews you have, whether it be all, you know, any of those channels, the more reviews you have, the better the reviews are. Search engines look at that and say this is a relevant, you know, this is a relevant business to people. Um, and they will, they will push that information much more somebody who's either no reviews or bad reviews. Um, so make sure that, you know, you don't, that, you know, Yelp and other businesses will say, don't solicit reviews. Um, the way that I've always recommended people do it is to simply, you know, ask a patient or ask somebody, hey, are you on Yelp or, or do you review things on Facebook or Google My Business? And if they say yes, go, we'd love for you to, to talk about your, you know, your experience here. Um, there are programs out there uh, that you should definitely look into where you can uh, automate the process of reaching out to them. And if it's a great review, it invites them to post, um, you know, on, on whatever channel. Uh, and if it's a bad review, it sends that information directly to you so that you can take it up and try to make it as, as, as best as you can. Um, and then things that you should look into is obviously review your site to make sure it's optimized for mobile and designed to accomplish its goals. Um, you know, you can speak with a, a, you know, a web designer or a web developer, you can speak with us, and we can take a look at those things to see if it's not, you should have a course of action to fix that and make sure that you know, we get you on the right path. And then you know, review your digital marketing strategy to include a layer of paid advertising on it. Um, you know, like I said before, all the work in the world to get you at the, as the top organic uh, result is fantastic, but there's always going to be ads. Uh, you know, Google doesn't make its money from, from just free information. Um, so layering that on top of it, you know, it, it, you know, I have a client who, even though they are the number one spot when you look up Pilates, they're the top organic search result. They still layer on the top to make sure that, you know, if somebody's even slightly not interested in clicking on it, there's that extra layer, whether it's an offer or whether it's something else that they can go to. Um, and we've, in, we've increased their, you know, the, the lead generation numbers, you know, by leaps and bounds simply by adding that layer to it. All right, Andre, thanks again. Thank you so much.